save this. Let's go and save this. I can click Save Project. Okay. <laughs> Audacity, this is just telling us what we already know. Audacity Project Files IUP let you save everything you're working on exactly as it appears on the screen, but most programs can't um, uh, open Audacity Project Files. When you want to save it, you have to export it. That's really just telling you what we're saying here, that, that the Audacity files are your developer's files. You're creating the audio files, but the rest of the world isn't going to be able to handle it. So I'm going to turn that warning off because we know that. And I'm going to go and save it, and I'll save it on the desktop, and we will call it Wednesday after one of the Adams family children. All right. Now I close out of it. Now look what we got. We don't have just the one file. We have the one file and a folder. All right. So if we were to get rid of the folder, um, we would lose stuff, we'd lose the data. If we look inside of that, we see this is some format, um, you know, this is, this is the individual tracks and edits and settings um, distinct to uh, Audacity. If we look at the extensions, it would be, I think, AU files. This is something proprietary. Who knows what's in that, those files, you know. But this file is sort of the file that, like, keeps everything together, the AUP file. So if we went back in and wanted to do some work on this, double-click it, there it restores it. And again, notice that it restored it at, the, at those settings. But you're absolutely right. When you are done uh, and you export it then, then... Um, you lose the sense of the, the, the tracks. In fact, let's, let's go and do that, all right, because that's probably a good next step. All right, file. I can export as a wave or export as an MP3. If I click Export as MP3, track will be down to a single mono channel. Not sure if that's my setting. That's your setting. Yeah, it must be, because I should be able to do stereo. But all right, let's go and do this. That's true. Yeah, I think it. No, I didn't. You can change it though. Oh, I I have this thingy on on my. Yeah. Next one we'll do we'll do in stereo. All right, and I can go and export as an MP3. Does it let you? No. Okay. <laughs> it let you get all the way there, and it's like God right. ah, jokes on you. You yeah, can't you do this. Download something, but I use um a free another piece of free software. It's for like conversion of. Okay. Any type of files. Okay. Well, that's free. I export it as wave, and it'll let you okay. do that. And then, I mean, then you got to change and convert it. To okay. MP3. Yeah. Uh, uh, there are a couple ways that you can do this. One way is there's actually a plugin for MP3, but for whatever reason, you don't get it when you install it. It's probably developed by different people, and it's like, yeah, just go out and. and if you and click it. yes, it might find it. No, no. Well, it, it might find it if like they if someone downloaded it already and forgot to, to, to go and do this. If you click yes, it is going to send you to a web page and then another yeah, web page. Download. No, it's not. Actually, if I click yes, it's going to browse. Well, oh, oh, okay. Oh, I've been using this for 12 years. All right. Okay. Slow down. Slow down. We click yes, it's going to look. show me my disk, all right, which I can go and look for it. So, like, if I knew that it was in C program files, I could look for that. But because no one's downloaded it yet, it's not there. So now what I have to do is forget the name of that DLL. It was lame something dot DLL. Oh, that's right. I was made it. <laughs> Yeah, really. Yeah, right, is it? Yeah. <laughs> All right, so now I go here and download it.
Does anyone want to kick in a few bucks? Not today. Is that right? No, that's not what I want. This one's not a little zip. Now the good news is you only need to do this once. <coughs> so I'll go and I'll put this somewhere. You probably don't want to put it on the desktop. All right, you probably want to put it in your program files or something. And now when I go up to file export as mp3, yeah, 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 yeah. All right, do I want to locate it? Now I should be able to find it in that folder. There we go. And I can go and put some information about it if I want to. Click OK. It goes and does its thing. And we should have our MP3 file. If we listen to. It's a mix of those two tracks. Now, to your question, if I go and I re-import this in, into Audacity, which I can't do directly, I have to open up Audacity and then do it. Import audio. It comes in as the one solo track, uh, just a mix of those two. It's like opening the image on Photoshop and like expecting the layers to be there or something. Exactly, exactly. That's why that's why you keep them both. You know, you keep the one for development in, in case you want to go back and change it. And I would only get rid of it if you were absolutely sure you didn't need it again, because I guarantee. If you are absolutely sure you're going to need it again, a half hour later you're going to think of something you forgot. So even then, don't get rid of it if you're absolutely sure. Because, <laughs> again, you, you, don't, you don't get that information back, right? Once it's collapsed, then, then it's there. Let's go, and, let's go and start a fresh one. And this time I'll record... Um, this one I'll record um, using stereo. With stereo, there's actually two tracks that gives the that gives a more lifelike illusion. With mono, there's just one track. So even if it's coming out of with stereo, um, there's there's two separate audio tracks going. A different one coming out of the right and left speaker. So for example, if horses were running across like the the, the screen, let's say we wanted to do a, a video, I could have it where the horses were really loud in the right speaker. Then a second later, they were equally loud in the right and left, and then they were loud in the left speaker. And it would give the effect that they're running across the screen. Uh, haven't you ever noticed when you're listening to music, like uh, the bass might be, sound like it's coming from here, and the guitar might sound like it's coming yeah. from here? Yeah, it, yeah it's the same idea. Between stereo and mono. Yeah, mono is where the two tracks would be the same. <coughs> it's a more lifelike sound. Like it, it, It's closer to hearing like the way a band would actually sound. It's, it's most apparent if you're wearing headphones, uh, where you can you can hear. Mono track usually the left. I don't know. Yeah, I have to beat ignorance on that one. All right, let's go and let's record in stereo. All right, here we go. Now that's only showing left. I wonder. It's in this. I think it does it after you stop it. Okay, it let's try. Into two sides. Uh -huh. Are you my options? I'm not oh. sure. References. Oh, it's, it's under that little. Oh, thing. there we go. Never the point. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll be there too. There we go. Now let's oh, try. The image it goes back to the default. Let's exactly. Go. All right, here we go. But again, it's only showing on the one track. Um, not on this guy. 
Um, we do have this to go back between. Could be a problem with the microphone. Could be a problem with the microphone. Oh, I did that too. Connection. I couldn't figure out what it yeah. was. Well, you do need a stereo mic, don't you? Yeah, that could be a problem too. Maybe this mic. I thought this mic was a stereo mic, but I may be mistaken. All right. At any rate, okay, we have this. Now, what are some things that we can do? Let's go and delete this. And let's go and record something. Something better. Hello, this is a test of our recording software. Let's do that again. Hello, this is, this is a test of our... Um, what do we call it again? Oh yes, Audacity, our recording software. My suggestion to you when you're recording is don't hit stop just because you fumble on some words, even if you curse a little bit. All right? You can always go back and edit that out. All right? So for example, if we listen to this, Yeah. So let's go. Oops. Play this again. Of our, um, what do we call it again? Oh yes, Audacity, our recording software. Okay. So if we watched, essentially from here to here was me hemming and hawing. And if I wasn't being recorded for YouTube, I might even have been swearing, right? But what we can do is go up here and highlight that section, and we can tell where that section is pretty easily, all right, just by the way the waves are, are going. And I can go up here and say edit, and I can say cut. And now when we listen to it, oh, hello, this is, this is a test of our Audacity, our recording software. Okay, no hems and haws, just went right in there, went very smooth between the two. So my suggestion when you record this, like when you record your podcast or you have a couple of audio assignments and when you do some, uh, you know, or even if you practice or whatever, is that don't sweat it if you make a mistake. All right, just keep, keep on recording. Because you will never talk it from beginning to end perfect. All right? If you do, then, you know, maybe you need a job as a TV announcer or something. You know, you could, you could go do that. But most of the time you're going to hem and haw, you're going to say something, you're going to like, oh, well, you know, you're bound to make mistakes. My, I, my philosophy is just go ahead and record it, and you can go and fix it later. All right? Now, whoa, there's some other things that you can do as far uh, as editing the, um, editing your stuff. That relates to effects. You can select this, and again, these are things you can do for fun. Forget the assignments for a minute. But you can go here and you can change the pitch. So you might wonder, it's the thing of the, uh... you might wonder, like, what would it sound like if the chipmunks were teaching this class? We could go and we could change the pitch and run it. <laughs> and again, we can select the area that we want to do that to and change it. Um, we can also lower the pitch if we wanted to. Notice as it does this, it doesn't change the speed at which I'm speaking. That was, I've been doing it to extreme levels, so that's why it was almost impossible to hear. Now, here's something that you could do that actually is practical. You ever notice, uh, again, some of those, like, used car stores uh, or, or used car lots, at the end of their commercial, some guy rattles off the terms and conditions, you know. We'll give you a free car. Then at the end, it's like, well, by free, we mean that it's free after you pay the $200 every week for the next six years, you know. Whereas you can speed it up without changing the pitch. Normally, if you speed something up, 
it'll make it sound faster. But there we change the pitch without changing the tempo. Here we can go in and we can change the speed, or the tempo rather, right, without changing the pitch. So now I'm going to talk real fast, but it's not going to go and change that. So what I can do actually is, if I know I want this to last four seconds, and the recording lasts six seconds, I can go and I can say, all right, change it so that I say all these things in four seconds. So now we go and listen. Oh, hello. This is, this is a test of our Audacity, our recording software. <laughs> all right. Again, it sounds a little goofy, but essentially it, it does that. So if you had something, and again, you know, if you're creating like a radio spot or something that you have very strict time spots for, all right, and you go two seconds over, but you set it perfectly, that would be an option to speed up the tempo of it so it goes a little quicker. And again, if you speed it up just a small amount, it won't sound goofy like that. Then there's all kinds of things that you can do if you really want to have fun, all right? Um, one thing that you can do is you could put echo on it. Um, you can give a wah-wah sound if you want to sound like Charlie Brown's teacher. You can reverse it if you want to put secret messages in your podcast. Um, all sorts of things. One of the more effective ones would be fade in and fade out. All right? Fade in and fade out would allow you to, like, if you're bringing music in, like, for example, in your podcast, you have to take a, an audio track that I have and, and bring it in and fade out. You could go in and say, I want to fade this in, whereas very gradually it will get louder as it comes in. I'm going to record all my lectures at that speed from now on. I think that, you know, we'll do speed learning here. We'll do everything a lot quicker. But you can fade it in, and you can fade it out as well. All right? Um, there was something else I was going to talk about. Compressing. Whoops. I have to do a selection first. Let me unfade and unchange tempo. Compression. What I can do is I can make the file smaller by compressing the differences between the loudest and the quietest. All right? An orchestra, if you record classical music especially, an orchestra, there are huge variations between the, the loudest parts and the most quiet parts. More so than even in, in popular music. In popular music, there's a consistent level typically. Whereas in, in a lot of orchestras, there's a big range. So you would not want to compress. However, if you're doing something like spoken, you know, just me speaking, it's not like I'm hitting really high notes and hitting low notes, and it's not like I'm talking very quiet, then very loudly. I'm keeping around the same amount. So I could go and compress. And the effect of that would be... Hello. This is, this is a test of our Audacity, our recording software. And it's kind of hard to see the difference between that. Essentially what it did is it brought the highs and lows closer, so it was at a more consistent volume. And because of that, it's going to take up less space All right, when I go and export it. Um, it also has the potential of getting rid of, of like background noise because if there's something crickling, it, it will not make the sound threshold. The other thing you can do, by the way, is there's noise reduction. Sometimes, especially like depending on the room you're in, you might hear a hiss or a hum of something. You can, you can go and the way noise reduction works is like this. Let me see if I remember this. Let me go and record something. All right. I'm going to not say anything for a couple seconds. I know that might be hard for you to believe, but let's go. All right, now I'm going to say something. Now, if you notice, when I wasn't saying anything, the level was still going a little bit. Because you might not even notice it, but there's like a hum going on. I don't know whether the lights or whatever. Or the fan of the projector, yeah. So what I can do is I can say... I want 
noise removal. And what it will do is it will allow me to pick what is noise. Well, what is noise? Noise is going to be what it was recording when I wasn't speaking. So I'm going to click Get no Noise Profile and say, yeah, that's my noise. Wait a minute. Select a few seconds of noise. Get Noise Profile. Okay, there we go. Now I can go and select that and say Noise Removal. And I can either make it more noise removal or less noise removal and click remove noise it did it for the selection let me go and do it for the whole thing now because we should be able to see this yeah. yeah it should find right, out now I'm going to say something I don't know if I did not select my noise profile correctly. Let's try again. Did select more? I don't think so. Select a few seconds of just noise. All right. Get noise profile. Maybe try and preview it when you go to remove it. All right. Let's see. Or don't do it all so you can see the difference. I'm really, let's see, let's, let's undo it. Let's see if we can audibly tell a difference. All right, let's listen. We'll turn it way up. All right, now I'm going to say something. All right, well, let's try again. Let's go and select the noise noise removal get noise profile then I will select everything and say noise removal remove noise I think there it did a lot better it, it reduced the uh, overall volume level no, it, it reduced the level of noise. Because if I go watch, if I do unno undo noise removal, yeah, let's do a view. Alright. If I go and redo noise removal, that's a lot flatter. We'll focus on that area there. There it's pretty flat. If I undo it, it becomes bumpy. So it is getting rid of some of the noise. All right. The key is picking something that's representative of the noise. I have a feeling um, someone had made the suggestion was I picking a big enough section, and I might not have been. I might not have been <coughs> picking up a big enough or a representative enough of a section. Because when I changed it, um, it seemed to do better with that. But again, that's something you can play with and research online. That's, that's a basic idea. And by getting rid of that, again, you know, you have the potential of compromising the quality of the sound because you're getting rid of information. But the idea is, is someone listening to me speaking isn't listening to hear the quality of my voice. They're listening to hear the words I'm going to say, as opposed to music where you do run the risk of losing you know, some information that, that would be important, some of, the, some of the audio. Questions about this? This, this equipment and stuff is available uh, in the lab, so you can um, use it um, if you want just to practice, even if you're not ready to do the assignment yet. The, the way, again, you get good at this in general is just by playing around with it. All right, we'll see you over in lab.